Welcome you all to another exciting episode of Expose. I remain your anchor lady, Bukola by name. For those of us who have been asking questions about why we were off your radio for the past few weeks, we needed to take some time off to sort out some technical issues. We are glad we are back and we are glad that you are here with us today. And for those who are gone, we want to say please come back. And for those who are back, we want to say please stay with us. Is there anything you want to tell our audience who have been following the previous episodes? Thank you, viewers. Um, we thank God you've joined us for another um, exciting episode of Expose. And we trust the Lord that you're going to get blessed by the revelations of the word of the Lord we're going to share today. So stay tuned. Okay, where do we go today? Okay, that's a good question. I believe for those who followed us up on the internet, um, YouTube, and on the Expose Facebook page, I think now we actually are starting the sixth episode today. Yeah. And there, you see, I know we're on a journey of learning Christ, who He is, and uh, the implication of His knowledge to our lives. Yeah, so today we're making progress with that. Okay, if you want to have a quick recap of the previous episodes, and so we can launch into another depth in the revelation of who Christ is. So, where are we taking off? Yeah, thank you, Uncle Lady. Um, you see, um, you see, we've been for the past five episodes. We've actually um, kicked off by understanding the implication of knowing who Christ is. We talked about the fact that the foundation of the church is the knowledge of who Christ is. We've seen that when Peter said, and Jesus answered him and said, "Oh, Peter, you are right." He said, "When Peter said that, oh, Christ," Jesus said, "You are right. I'm Christ, and upon this I will build my church." We've gone through all that, and then. Today, what we're actually going to actually kick off today is bringing a new dimension to the knowledge of who Christ is. How was that dimension? Let oh, me ask. Oh, thank you. Now, thank you, Uncle Lady. We actually said something, remembered, on the, I think on the fourth episode, when we talked about the fact that the same Jesus in mm -hmm. Acts 4, the Bible said he was the one that was made Lord and Christ. So now, we are understanding is being Christ. Mm -hmm. And today, the progress uh, we're going to make is to see uh, at what point did he become Christ. We said that last uh, so two episodes that he became Christ when Peter said at the day of Pentecost, Peter said, The same Jesus whom you crucified. I'm quoting Acts chapter 4. Now, he said, The same Jesus whom you crucified, God has made him both Lord, Lord and Christ. You see, the word there is crucifixion. It was at the point of his crucifixion that his lordship and his Christhoodness spun up. In case you have missed that, let me quickly have that you can go over this episode again, go over episode four again. I had that time for me to I had sat back to look at this episode myself. So you might just need to go back to refresh. We need to remind ourselves of all, of all these things again. So why is it important that we need to know the exact point why it became Christ? Well, thank, thank you, Uncle Lee. That's a very good question. You see, if we understand, according to Acts chapter 4, the point at which it was made Christ, then we can see the implication of his being Christ to our lives. Because see, what we're doing in Expose, we're not just trying to stop knowledge for the sake of knowledge. We are actually looking into these dimensions of who Christ is as an implication for our lives. Okay. So if we know Acts chapter 4 said, the same Jesus whom you crucified, God has made him Lord in Christ, I want to see what happened to Jesus at the point and beyond crucifixion. Mm -hmm. And that, that gives us a clear road to his being Christ. And we see where do we appear in the picture. Because the Bible says in the book of Osea, chapter 4, verse 6, my people are destroyed because of the lack of what? Knowledge. What we don't know is what is killing us. Not demons, not, 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 not the environment, not darkness. Our problem is in what we don't know. And the Bible says Jesus became Christ at the point of crucifixion. We want to kick off from there today. So I want to emphasize what it does say is what we don't know that is killing us. Yes. Not demons. No, not demons, not Satan. It's what we don't know. And so bringing you back to your words where you said, we want to know what happened to 
Christ before crucifixion, Jesus before crucifixion, and afterward. So yeah. can you just oh, take us down there? Yeah, thank you, Uncle Lady. Now, when we say this again, I believe you viewers were not delivering the point. We are saying Acts of the Four said it was at the point of his crucifixion that it became, that it became Christ. Christ. So today we're going to kick off from there. What happened at his crucifixion? So you take us? Oh, okay, thank you. That's a good question. Now, uh, if you're watching us, I would like you to have a look through the uh, book, uh, the Bible, the book of Philippians chapter 3. Philippians and let's see what three. the Apostle Paul made reference to when he's talking about him knowing who Christ is. Okay. Now, we're going to kick off from Philippians chapter uh, three. 3. Now, I'll, we'll look at it from verse 8. Let's see the journey of one of the greatest apostles on his learning, the person of Christ. Philippians chapter 3. We'll take it from verse 8. Now I'll read. Now the King James Version. Now it says, Yet doubtless, and I count all things but loss, for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord. Okay. Now it says, I'll read it again. Yet doubtless, and I count all things but loss, for the supremacy of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord. So he's saying, I'm going to make sure nothing stops me in pursuing in knowing who Christ is. This is the most excellent kind of knowledge. And it says, whom, For whom I suffer the loss of all things, and do count them but dung that I may win Christ. Christ. Now, okay, I'm be found in him, that's verse 9, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Verse 10, that I may know him again. You know, he's in verse 8, he talked about knowing him. Now in verse 10, he says, that I may, I need to know him. Who? He mentioned him as Christ Jesus, the Lord, in verse 8. That I may know him. Not just knowing him, I need to know the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death. Now here he's talking about the fact that in knowing who he is, I need to actually come into the experience of his resurrection, okay. experience of being made comfortable unto his death. Because that's where he's been Christ shut out. Mm. You see, you see, that's why we talk about want to know who Christ is. If Acts 4 says, the Jesus you crucified, God has made in Christ, I think there's a lot of shallowness in understanding what happened to Jesus when he died, which is where his Christness, if you read the word Christness, started from. So you are saying that the fulcrum of the knowledge of Christ is perverted on the basis of the understanding of this resu resurrection. Yeah, from the death, because you, do, you don't have a resurrection until there's a death. That's why Paul said that I mean, in the power of his resurrection, and he said, be made conformable unto his death. death. So you see, there's no resurrection without understanding his death. Mm -hmm. And Paul said, because I want to know him, that I may know him, I need to know these things as well. Because this is what knowing him is all about. Well, we found out that today that the knowledge of the death, the resurrection has become ceremonial today. So, mm. like you said, that today's episode is going to be about the, what is it in, in need for us? The Amen. knowledge of this, Amen. the knowledge of Christ, what is in the implication Amen. for us? Well, yeah. we found out that it has been relegated to ceremonial knowledge of just death. Mm. Hardly, if you find anybody today, anybody can explain yeah. theoretical basis of the death. Amen. But yet, there is no understanding of this. And so we do not have the, mm. the knowledge of, our, of Christ, of who Christ is, mm. from that premise. Mm. Now, death now, and resurrection. Uncle Lee, you just mentioned something very important. You're talking about the fact that knowing who Christ is and how that, that affects our daily experience. Yes. Now, you see, a good knowledge, the right knowledge of Christ will do something to you. Mm. Now, you see, Jesus said in um, John chapter 8, verse 31, verse 32, he said that, Bible said, he said to the disciples that believed on him, that if you continue in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you will know the truth, the truth and the truth will set you free. Now, I hope you know that when he said the truth, he's not talking about some set of instructions. Mm -hmm. Because he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody can come to the Father by me. Mm -hmm. And John chapter 1 says about him again, that he is Jesus. He said, will be at his glory, as of the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. He is the truth. Is that okay? And it says, if you know the truth, if you know who I am, John 8, 32 says, if you know the truth, if you know me, that, my, that knowing me will set you free. So actually, the purpose of knowing who Christ is, ultimately, is to end up on me. Mm. Look at what Paul said again. I think we need to read this again. Please, Uncle Lady, if you please. 
Now, Philippians yeah. 3 again, Philippians 3 again, look at what he said in verse 10. I need us to go through it line by line in verse 10. Philippians 3 verse 10, he said, that I may know him. Look at that. Now, he started, from, he started with him, that I may know him. And, not just knowing him disconnected from the fact that I need to know the power of his resurrection. Okay. And the fellowship of his sufferings, being made what? Conformable. Until then, look at what happens in verse 11, if I do this. If I get to this point of knowing him through this means. See what it said. He by any means, I, I might. might. See, it and high. Something happens to me. Something mm. begins to rise up in me. I begin to experience a resurrection in me. See, can you see verse 11? That I, may, I might attain. Unto. That, you see, I'm learning who he is. I need to know who he is so that I can attain. That's why, you see, when, when we do an expose, I know some people might be saying, oh, you know what? Uh, what is about these people talking about mm -hmm. Jesus and Jesus and Jesus? And Please, what, 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 what is it? I mean, I mean, this is just theory in this Bible. Let's talk about serious matters. Listen to me. Philippians 3 the Apostle Paul said, I need to know him in verse 10. Then he said in verse 11, it's going to make me attain. I'm going to resurrect. I'm going to come out from the grave. Now you might be wondering, what kind of resurrection is he talking about? We're going to get there very soon. But we're simply saying, who we know Christ as, has a lot to do with what is rising up in us. Mm. If we don't do verse 10, we will not go to verse 11. Mm. This is what we're talking about, about an expose. I just hope our whole day so we'll be able to connect the dots and be able to see that shift yeah. from you know verse 10 to 11. Yeah. In knowing him, then you have 10 unto it. My team, yeah. and so for people who are eager and itching to know what is there, what is in it for me, what yeah. what is it, what can I lay hold on? Mm. You just have to go. But the only way you go through is mm. through the knowledge of the death and the resurrection. Yeah. That you might attain. Yeah. So if there's any way you're looking for to attain, the, the no. attainment is hooked on this. It's Amen. hooked on the knowledge. Amen. And so you can see the relevance. Amen. Thank I'm glad you're bringing that out. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Uncle Lady, for that. You know, this, this, these things we are looking into, it's good for us to know that we have actually said this on one episode of Expose. Uh, at least this will help somebody who has not been on this particular program before. We have said it that the Bible says we do not know him after the flesh anymore, mm. even though we once regarded him. In the, in the flesh, you know, before he became Christ, you know, when it was Jesus in the flesh. But as soon, Acts chapter 4 says, this Jesus you crucified, mm. now is Christ. Christ. So you see, the crucifixion was like a transition point. Mm. So you see, that my people don't even know who Christ is until they start from the crucifixion. It's irrelevant if you walk with him in Galilee, or you say you want to go to Jerusalem and walk where you work. It's good. It's wonderful. But Acts chapter 4 says, it was the same Jesus they crucified. So that's why on Exposé today, we are starting from crucifixion. Mm. That's when Christ begins to become who he is. So Paul said, if I want to know him, I've got to start understanding resurrection and death. Philippians 38. So to rephrase it, we just say our journey begins from the crucifixion. Oh yeah, that's where Acts chapter 4, Philippians 3 uh, verse 10, they're all saying that's where Christ started from. Our journey begins from the crucifixion. From the crucifixion. Now, I, I think I need to say this. Because um, before, some people actually misconceive what we're actually trying to uh, portray on this uh, program. I know, yeah, because you see, Matthew 16, when uh, Jesus and um, the disciples were there, and they were talking about Jesus, whom do mercy I am, and everything, and Peter gave the revelation that you, thou art Christ, son of a living God. I, I need to say this to you, that in actual fact, um, if what Acts chapter 4 said is true, mm -hmm. about the fact that it was Jesus that he crucified that became Christ, mm -hmm. and if... Um, um, you know, um, 7 Corinthians 5 actually is true. It talks about if anybody's in Christ, the new creation, and all that kind of stuff. That we understand the fact that it was, the Bible said, God made him Lord and Christ. You have to understand the fact that Peter said all that, understanding in Revelation who Jesus will end up becoming ultimately. Mm. Because, see, if, if it wasn't so, then it wouldn't be a revelation. I mean, it would be obvious. Yeah, it will be obvious, and that was why Jesus commanded him that was the spirit that revealed to him. Now, if you want to ask, let's do scriptures to confirm scriptures. If what I'm saying is just my own um, gesticulation, my own concept. Now, let me tell you, as soon as Peter said that, you understand that immediately the second first two verses after that revelation, after Jesus was done with saying, Simon by Jonah, flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you. You can check this yourself in Matthew 16. When Jesus commanded Peter and all that, the next thing Bible said he was talking about his death, mm. you know. If you don't think about his death, that son of man will be what crucified. Immediately after that revelation, Jesus said, Well, you know what? Actually, Peter, let's go on with this discourse. 
the Son of Man will be crucified. Mm -hmm. On the third day, he will rise up again. Peter began to say, you will not what? He will not die. He said that immediately Peter declared him as what? As mm -hmm. Christ. So, so to tell you that, he was trying to make Peter understand the fact that what you saw is a revelation. So now we go on for that. <laughs> yeah, so, so, so are you getting it? So what we're trying to say is that you don't just start knowing who Christ is until you start from crucifixion. Even though, that's how I try to explain that Peter's statement to you. So you don't think that, oh, what are you saying? He was being called Christ before he died. It was a revelation of who would become, and that was actually confirmed. What Jesus told Peter, immediately Peter gave that revelation about his death and crucifixion. So any journey that does not start from the crucifixion is just a... It's, it's, it's a journey to Jesus. Left. It's a journey to Jesus, not yeah. a journey to Christ. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a journey to Jesus. You're just trying to... And it's good, because he's the head of Christ. But we're talking about Christ, because Christ... Jesus doesn't include you. <laughs> mm. Jesus does not include you. Jesus has no implication for you. Because only if any man is in Christ, Christ it's, it's, if any man is in Christ, the new creation, all what you can make claim of for your life, is in Christ. for your resurrection, for your deliverance, for your liberty, mm. for your destiny, is not in Jesus. It's in Christ. It's in Christ. So if, if it's in Christ, then you want to start your journey, you want to understand the journey of Christ. I just hope that our hundreds will understand that and they will not misconstrue that, <laughs> that word because it's deep. It was, if you are going back to that verse, it was just saying, if any man be in Christ, we need yeah. to, that's why we need to sit down and start looking at this. Nah. Looking at each of those specific words that were used. If anyone is in Christ, not in Jesus. If anyone is in Christ. that's significant. Yeah, man. Amen. It's, Amen. it's significant Amen. to see it is. Amen. So, Man, if, if you notice, uh, I'm calling it, if you notice, I mean, see, we could stay on one verse for the whole of the exposition today. If you notice, Philippians 3 again. Look, notice. Let's, let's go back up. Okay. Look at verse 8 again. Watch the words of who Apostle Paul was trying to know. Now, verse 8 says, Ye doubtless, and I count all things but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of what? Of Christ Jesus. Of Christ Lord. Jesus. Not Jesus Christ. Mm. Of Christ Jesus. What does it mean? Then we were saying the same thing. Mm. It was the Jesus... Jesus, who was the Christ, at the point of crucifixion, became the Christ Jesus. Because some people might just wonder that it's just the same thing, it's just the extrapolation of name, just like I can say, I'm glad they were here, they were they might just say it's the same thing. So, what's the difference? Okay. Now, 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 think about it. I mean, even if you say Jesus Christ and Christ Jesus, think yeah. about it. Even in common sense language, mm -hmm. uh, if I say Bukola Adewale, think about it. You know, our first name is Bukola, the son name is Adewale. Mm -hmm. Is that okay? But when I talk about Adewale Bukola, now technically I'm saying, well, essentially, the real personality is Adewale, and the last name has a mid word, Bukola. Yeah. You see, the word Christ in the Greek word means Christos, and the Christos is what we're going to anoint it from. Yeah. So if we say Jesus, the anointed. Mm -hmm. So the focus is on him as a person. Mm -hmm. And the anointing is what is on him. Mm. So which means our focus, we're addressing him, we're saying it's him that has the what? The anointing. But when we say Christ, Jesus, saying the anointing is the one that has him. Yeah, yeah, the anointing that has him. So that's why it is anointing, now he is part of it. Mm. Not the anointing is part of him. Mm. That's mm. why he's called the head of the body. body. Because now he is part of Christ. That's the reason why we say Christ is much bigger than just Jesus. Yeah. Because we also are in Christ. If anybody is in, in Christ. Christ. That's why he is Christ, but not just him alone. We are also in Christ. It's so exciting to be part of this big picture so in Christ. In Christ. That's why we say if anybody is in Christ. It, that's why it's nice to say there's a deal between Christ, Jesus. Because now we're talking about Christ. Then Jesus is seen as he is in the anointing, and we are also in the same anointing. <laughs> mm. we, we are, so that's why we are called heirs, joint heirs with what? With Christ. Because we are in the same grace, we are in the same anointing. But when it was Jesus, the Christ, the anointing, that Christos was in him as a person. But now, no more. We don't name after the flesh anymore. No more, no more. We're talking about Christ now. The more you talk about it, the more excited I get that I am man. in Christ. I'm so man. excited. Yeah, man. And so for anyone that is outside of Christ, that is not in Christ, this is an invitation for you to be in Christ, to be in that part of That's the That's why the church is the body of Christ. Of Christ. We're all in the same, as you might call it, the same, I mean, structure. That's the word you want to use. Mm. And that structure is Christ. 
Yeah, so I there's think... a difference between it. So Paul was saying, I, I need to know him. <laughs> I need to one is I need to know Christ Jesus, not just uh, Christ, the, the Jesus who is in the Christ, for which Paul too was a part. <laughs> oh, I wish we could go on and on on this, you know, okay. because because of the time we just have to round up now. Is there any way you want to round up this series? Okay, thank you, Uncle Lady. Uh, what I need to say as we round up is just to make our viewers understand that what we are actually entering into now is to know who Christ is. Okay. Christ Jesus. And I said, for you to know, when you know who Christ Jesus is, you're going to understand who you are. Is that okay? Because we are on the same, we, we, we all belong to Christ. We are in Christ. And we have said that we don't start learning Christ until we start from crucifixion. That's when the journey starts. You can check that up yourself. Acts chapter 4, Peter Simon on the, um, on the, when they, on the uh, at Pentecost, you can check it out in, um, what's the name, in Philippians chapter 3, when Paul talked about the journey of knowing who Christ is, starts from him knowing resurrection and death. You can see all that, and this is confirmed by the scriptures, that the journey to Christ starts from what? The crucifixion. That's when we begin to actually learn who he is. So viewers, don't forget to hang out with us on our Facebook page. We like it, and let's expand this discussion further. We are looking forward to receive your questions. We are looking forward to receive your comments. We are looking forward for you to subscribe to the videos and be able to avail yourself of some resources and some of the teaching sessions. And if you have come back, if you have not watched the previous episode, just go back and listen. And if you have, if you have done it before, you can still go back and remind yourself of this. So till next time, we'll see you again. We want to say thank you and stay with us as we... Thank Christ. Bye. Okay, bye.